Menander was a Greek dramatist and the best-known representative of Athenian New Comedy. He was the author of more than a hundred comedies, and took the prize at the Lenio Festival eight times. His record at the city Dionysia is unknown but may well have been similarly spectacular. One of the most popular writers of antiquity, his work was lost in the Middle Ages and is known in modernity in highly fragmentary form, much of which was discovered in the 20th century. Only one play, Discolus, has survived almost entirely, Life and Work. Menander was the son of well-to-do parents, his father Diopides is identified by some with the Athenian general and governor of the Thracian, Chersonese known from the speech of Demosthenes de Chersonaceo. He presumably derived his taste for comic drama from his uncle Alexis. He was a friend, associate, and perhaps pupil of Theophrastus, and was on intimate terms with the Athenian dictator Demetrius of Philirum. He also enjoyed the patronage of Ptolemy Sota, the son of Lagos, who invited him to his court. But Menander, preferring the independence of his villa in the Piraeus and the company of his mistress Glycera, refused. According to the note of a scoliast on the Ibis of Ovid, he drowned while bathing, and his countrymen honoured him with a tomb on the road leading to Athens, where it was seen by Pausanias. Numerous supposed busts of him survive, including a well-known statue in the Vatican, formerly thought to represent Gaius Marius. His rival in dramatic art was Philemon, who appears to have been more popular. Menander, however, believed himself to be the better dramatist, and, according to all Aeschylus, used to ask Philemon, don't you feel ashamed whenever you gain a victory over me? According to Caius Elias of Calacta, Menander was accused of plagiarism, as his The Superstitious Man was taken from the Augur of Antiphanes. But reworkings and variations on a theme of this sort were commonplace and so the charge is a complicated one. How long complete copies of his plays survived is unclear, although 23 of them, with commentary by Michael Sellas, were said to still have been available in Constantinople in the 11th century. He is praised by Plutarch and Quintilian, who accepted the tradition that he was the author of the speeches published under the name of the Attic Orator Charisius. An admirer and imitator of Euripides, Menander resembles him in his keen observation of practical life, his analysis of the emotions, and his fondness for moral maxims, many of which became proverbial. The property of friends is common, whom the gods love die young, evil communications corrupt good manners. These maxims were afterwards collected, and, with additions from other sources, were edited as Menander's one-verse maxims, a kind of moral textbook for the use of schools. The single surviving speech from his early play Drunkenness is an attack on the politician Calamedon, in the manner of Aristophanes, whose bawdy style was adopted in many of his plays. Menander found many Roman imitators. Eunicus, Andrea, Hute and Tim Romanos and Adelphi of Terence were avowedly taken from Menander, but some of them appear to be adaptations and combinations of more than one play. Thus in the Andrea were combined Menander's The Woman from Andros and The Woman from Perinthos, in the Eunicus, The Eunuch and The Flatterer, while the Adelphi was compiled partly from Menander and partly from Diphilus. The original of Terence's Hesira is generally supposed to be, not by Menander, but Apollodorus of Charistus. The Bacchidus and Stichus of Plautus were probably based upon Menander's The Double Deceiver and Brotherly Loving Men, but the Poenulus does not seem to be from the Carthaginian, nor the Mastellaria from the Apparition, in spite of the similarity of titles. Caius Elias Statius, Lucius Lavinius, Terpilius and Attilius also imitated Menander. He was further credited with the authorship of some epigrams of doubtful authenticity, the letters addressed to Ptolemy Sota and the discourses in prose on various subjects mentioned by the Suda are probably spurious. Loss of his work Most of Menander's work did not survive the Middle Ages, except as short fragments. Michael Solos might be the last writer who may have known more than we do today. 
Federico da Montefeltro's library at Urbino reputedly had Tutler Opera, a complete works but its existence has been questioned and there are no traces after Cesare Borgia's capture of the city and the transfer of the library to the Vatican, until the end of the 19th century. All that was known of Menander were fragments quoted by other authors and collected by Augustus Minica and Theodore Koch. Comicorum Maticorum Fragmenta. These consist of some 1650 verses or parts of verses, in addition to a considerable number of words quoted from Menanda by ancient lexicographers. 20th century discoveries. This situation changed abruptly in 1907, with the discovery of the Cairo Codex, which contained large parts of the Samia, the Pericaromene, the Epitopontes, a section of the heroes, and another fragment from an unidentified play. A fragment of 115 lines of the Sicioni War had been found in the papier mache of the mummy case in 1906. In 1959, the Bodmer Papyrus was published containing Discolis, more of the Samia, and half the Aspish. In the late 1960s, more of the Sikioniwa was found as filling for two more mummy cases. This proved to be drawn from the same manuscript as the discovery in 1906 which had clearly been thoroughly recycled. Other papyrus fragments continue to be discovered and published. In 2003, a palimpsest manuscript in Syriac writing of the 9th century was found where the reused parchment comes from a very expensive 4th century Greek manuscript of works by Menander. The surviving leaves contain parts of the Discolus and 200 lines of another, so far unidentified, piece by Menander. Famous quotations. He who labors diligently need never despair, for all things are accomplished by diligence and labor. Menander, New Epsilon Rho Rho Iota Phi Theta Omega Kappa Upsilon Beta Omicron Sigma, best known in English as the die is cast or the die has been cast. From the mistranslated Latin, I acta religares, a correct translation is, let the die be cast. The Greek form was famously quoted by Julius Caesar upon committing his army to civil war by crossing the river Rubicon. The popular form, the die is cast, is from the Latin Iacta Aliharest, a mistranslation by Suetonius 121 CE. According to Plutarch, the actual phrase used by Julius Caesar at the crossing of the Rubicon was a quote in Greek from Menarda's play Arephorus with the different meaning, let the die be cast, see discussion at the die is cast, and Aliyah I act arrest. He, Caesar, declared in Greek with loud voice to those who were present, let the die be cast, and led the army across. Lewis and Short, citing Casabon and Ruink, suggest that the text of Suetonius should read Jacta Aliyah Esto, which they translate as, let the die be cast, or, let the game be ventured. This matches Plutarch's third-person perfect imperative new epsilon rho rho iota phi theta omega kappa upsilon beta omicron sigma. Comedies. More complete plays Aspish. Discolis. Epitopontes. Pericaromene. Samia. Sikioni wa or Sikionaros. About half. Only fragments available standard editions. The standard edition of the least well-preserved plays of Menander is Castle Austin, Poetrum Comicorum Graecorum Volume, Vi, 2. For the better preserved plays, the standard edition is now on its three-volume lobe. A complete text of these plays for the Oxford Classical Texts series was left unfinished by Colin Austin at the time of his death, the October edition of Harry Sandbatch. Published in 1972 and updated in 1990, remains in print.